Next, we're going to jump into what I'm going to call tips uh, for installing an aftermarket oil cooler. This is a B&M oil cooler. Uh, it's basically the STM kit that you would buy. It's like 300 some bucks. Um, and if you've watched any of my other videos, my how-to videos, especially the one about uh, changing the OEM oil cooler lines, I had made a comment in there that if I had to do it all over again, I would probably just buy an aftermarket cooler because it was basically the same price. Uh, but now I kind of see why it was nice <laughs> to do it the way I did it and just buy the OEM lines because when you buy this kit, you are literally like creating the lines and you're making this whole thing yourself. And there are no real directions online for how to install this aftermarket oil cooler, which I found interesting. And I guess the reason for it, I think it's because people don't really want to tell you specifically what you should do because maybe they don't know for sure or... They don't want to be liable for telling you what to do. I'm not really sure. But good news for you guys is I have some tips for you with things that I did uh, with my oil cooler install. Of course, uh, first thing you want to do is uh, remove your front bumper so you could get uh, to this where this oil cooler goes. And then the STM kit, I bought the bracket that comes with the STM kit and I didn't like it. It just like bolts in one spot. Uh, it, it makes it so that the hoses would kind of point down, as you can see here. And it it just seemed, I didn't like only having one mounting point is basically what it came down to. But here's how you can, you know, this is a mock-up. I did quite a few mock-ups in this process. So here's how you can see what it would look like if you utilize that bracket. I'm sure people have used it and it's worked fine. But again, I plan on being on a dirt track doing ice racing and stuff. So I really wanted to make sure this was secure in place. So I felt like this bracket with one mounting point wasn't going to really cut it for me. Maybe I missed something. If someone else is running this bracket and another one that works well, let me know what worked for you. But here's a mock-up of what I did uh, with the OEM oil cooler brackets. I basically ended up modifying them to fit. Uh, this was just another test fit. As you can see right now, I have the lines kind of running towards the outside of the car. I did not end up running this uh, specific way, but I was trying to figure out how I could utilize these OEM brackets uh, to the best I could and, and without modifying them a whole lot. Uh, so this was just kind of a test fit with that. And now we flip to the test fit that I ended up actually going with. This is before I cut the brackets. I'm going to have to, or at least the one, the top bracket you're seeing, I end up grinding and cutting. So that's another thing you would have to do if you want to do this my way. So I understand why it would be simpler for people that don't have the right tools to just buy that bracket from STM and, and utilize that. But here you can see the basic mock-up I did to kind of figure out what I needed to do to my brackets. Uh, so uh, this main bracket here that hangs down, is the, the one I'm going to have to cut. Here you can see how close it is. It's very close uh, to the frame rail there. Um, I did end up tweaking it to give myself more room, as you're going to see later on as well. So this is one of the main brackets I had to modify quite a bit. So I ended up uh, taking a cutoff wheel and grinding out um, you know, where I thought I had to remove pieces to make this work. The nice part about using these OEM brackets is that you know, all you end up doing then, if you do it this way, is just kind of removing certain pieces of it. You don't really have to add new uh, places, new mounting points. So that's kind of a, a nice feature. And of course, the main advantage to me was really just utilizing two different mounting points and not just having one spot where it uh, connects to the car. So I don't really know if anyone would ever completely copy what I did here, but uh, just, let, just letting you know and showing you kind of the piece, uh, the portion I cut out, what it looks like. I ended up bending the other bracket. I didn't have to cut this bracket that has the two mounting bolts where it bolts to the frame rail. I didn't have to cut that one. I just had to kind of bend it around a bit to make it sit where I wanted. And as you can see here, I had to notch out this one little piece as well on this bracket uh, just to get it to fit really the way I wanted. So this is pretty close to the final piece of what this bracket looked like before, of course, I had to prime it and paint it because you know, this car is pretty nice. I don't think I should have anything rusty on this car, so I had to I had to paint it. But if you plan on doing something like this and uh, need more details on it, uh, reach out to me on Instagram or something. Let me know um, if you have questions about it, about actually making the brackets. I can give you more details. But I ended up, uh, as you can see, working in the dark now, uh, doing another test fit after I let these dry. I uh, wanted to do my final test fit after I painted them and uh, make sure that these would mount up like I wanted them to. And yeah, everything worked out pretty well to utilize the, the OEM brackets. I had to build basically an extender piece. Uh, you need a little piece of metal 
to add uh, to that other bracket um, that mounts to the car itself with the two bolts, the one I'm talking about bending, I had to basically to get clearance. So I had enough clearance for that top line so it wasn't right up against the frame rail. You basically had to push things out. You can, you can see it a little bit here. And unfortunately, I didn't film it very well, again, because this was a learning process for me. I don't, I've mentioned this before, I don't like making how-to videos on something I haven't done more than once. And this is obviously my first time. But here you can see that bracket. Uh, there's a little um, piece where it connects the two brackets together, basically the oil cooler and that one bracket. But I was definitely pretty happy with how it finally turned out. But it took me a couple of days, honestly, to get it the way I wanted it. Next, uh, something they don't give you instructions for, again, when you get this, is like how to put the lines together really uh, but basically this one piece of the line here I'm not even sure the proper terminology for this but I ended up you know putting this on uh, it's a, and it's tricky to get on because of the, the the mesh there's like a wire mesh around this hose to protect it of course but it's tricky to get these ends on you kind of have to fin finagle it around and, and twist it on push it on very hard um, but I just showed you that shot of the hose uh, because I believe you'd want that hose pushed up as far as you can uh, to that connecting piece uh, before you screw it in place um, as I'm doing now and then the two pieces kind of just uh, screw together and I will say too that if you're buying this like full STM kit, I think they should change a piece on it as well. So I'm going to give you that warning right now that one of the 90s, which uh, I think they might have even changed that kit since since I bought it because when I bought it, they sent me like 245 or 60 degree elbows. And then I looked on the way the kit was and then all of a sudden it said they had 90 degree elbows. Um, and uh, basically, yeah, you want a 90 or even a 120 for one of these uh, lines. But uh, here's both lines I ended up making. Again, I did this like a month ago, so I don't honestly remember. Um, but I think I ended up modifying one of these and shortening a little bit. But roughly speaking, you can see this, uh, this one line here was about 20 inches or so. And uh, again, I think I shortened up one of them. Uh, that's why this is not an exact how-to. You do need to cut this stuff, and it's it's tough to cut. If you buy the STM oil cooler kit, they're just going to give you a full like five-foot thing, and then you cut it to the length you need. And I think one of the trickiest parts for this was for me, at least. I mean, these are these are pipe thread apparently, the ends that go into the BNM cooler. So I did some research. I tried to figure out what I should use to prevent these from leaking, because of course it's an oil cooler, you do not want it to leak oil. And uh, pipe tape is kind of what uh, was recommended, but apparently pipe tape along with pipe dope um, is maybe what would have worked here. That is kind of what the go-to seems to be like in the actual plumbing industry, uh, pipe tape and pipe dope. Uh, so that might work for this. But I'm just going to say, you know, I'm just going to give you my experience and what I learned from this. I tried this with pipe tape. I tried it without pipe tape and it leaked like bad. Like it was leaking all the time. Uh, you need to be careful when you tighten these up. You can over tighten them. You can break things. Uh, so if you try to install this aftermarket oil cooler and it's leaking, don't just try to tighten it because it, it doesn't work pipe thread works differently than like what you're probably used to with working on a car with a normal nut and bolt. So that forewarning up front, uh, don't over tighten this if you are trying to install uh, an aftermarket oil cooler with uh, the pipe thread. So again, I basically did a bunch of test fits for this. Um, another tip I kind of have for you with this is if you planned on like saying, oh, well, I'm going to change my oil anyway, I'll just drain my oil, run the, run the new oil cooler, and you know, then I'll add my fresh oil and test everything. That's what I was gonna do at first, and then I thought about it, and I was like, you know what? That probably doesn't make the most sense, especially if I'm gonna be leaking oil, because then I'm gonna to have to try to fix my leaks and stuff like that um, anyway, uh, and then I'm just losing the new oil I added. And it was easier than I thought to actually just swap out these new lines, at least, at least for me, because I had the oil cooler block off stuff, so just some plugs that went to the oil filter housing. I was able to pull those plugs and then fairly quickly um, add the new lines to that. So that was kind of nice that I could do that. So basically, I tested this a couple times with the old oil that was in it and ran it, which was actually kind of nice too, because then if you think about it, if there was anything in that oil cooler, any debris in there, obviously they're super hard to clean. And that was that's a reason you'd buy a new one anyway, as you expect it to be clean. But if there was anything in there, 
at least then I ran it for a heat cycle or at least a little while before, you know, just a little bit just to run oil through that new oil cooler. And then I dumped it right away. You know, well, once everything was uh, situated here where there weren't leaks, then I, then I finally changed my oil. So as you can see, this was with the pipe tape. The pipe tape honestly just kind of like got eaten up, it seemed like, and uh, it, it, it leaked uh, and it leaked pretty good. So after a bit more research, this is what I found that is working for me right now. I am hesitant to, of course, say this is what you should for sure use. I would love to hear someone else's opinion on this and, and find out what you used if you did uh, install uh, your oil cooler. But this Permatex uh, Aviation Forma Gasket stuff, uh, I, you can get it at your local parts store. I have way more of it than I need at this point. Um, but this sealant liquid was, this whole bottle was relatively cheap, I think under 10 bucks, and it, for me, seemed to work like a charm. I just put a little bit on the threads before I tightened up and that's all I used and that took care of my leaks, at least as of now, so far. Again, I've been running it for about a month or so. Uh, it did seem like it, I wouldn't say leaked, but it, I don't know if it was just the, the stuff wearing in a little bit, like it was a bit sticky and almost like this stuff was kind of getting through, but it was way better than it was. Like I, I could handle, you know, if it did leak just a drop now and then, could handle that compared to initially when I did it it was like drop drip 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 like a constant drip so again I wish they gave you more direction on this uh, when you buy a kit like this it would be nice if they did something to tell you more of these details but hopefully this will help you guys out so you don't run into the same problems I did um, and hopefully someone else too that has done this you know leave a comment comment section let me know uh, what you think so once I tested that out and it wasn't leaking, I was like, great, I'll test a bit more. And I tested the clearance and that's where I ran into issues. You can see that the tire here, basically at full turn, uh, full turn to the left, it would rub against the actual line I had installed. Now I knew once I zip tied it and stuff, it would pull it over, but I did not like the way this looked. Again, I think this was about a 60 degree elbow and I was like not having it. I was like, okay, this isn't gonna work. I need to change this. So, uh, luckily there was a store close to me that uh, carried these uh, in stock. Thank you, Beyond Redline. And uh, I ended up picking up a 90 uh, that I think would originally come with this kit if you got it from STM. And then I also picked up a 120 degree, I believe it was, elbow because they had it in stock. And uh, I, I also want to say I think I cut a little bit off the line because I felt like there was a little bit extra slack in the hose. So I cut the hose a little bit shorter. Again, I don't fully remember. At least now I was to the point where I felt comfortable that everything wasn't going to leak. So I drained my oil, did my normal oil change, and, you know, removed the filter so you can get a better view here. I'll also say that these fittings that went into this oil filter housing, for those, I actually just used a little bit of blue Permatex. Uh, these are different, you know, types of fittings than the pipe fittings that go to your oil cooler. So, so far, so good for me. You don't want to overuse the Permatex, but I haven't experienced any, you know, leaks with this. But I used the blue Permatex on the uh, sides that went to the oil cooler uh, housing, or the oil filter housing, rather, I should say. Again, I'm very curious if anyone's done this themselves, uh, what they had used uh, to prevent any leaks if they installed their own aftermarket oil cooler. And now I'm just showing the sped up process of me swapping these out, the different options we had. I was able to just uh, pull out that old 60 degree one, loosen that up. You basically need some bigger wrenches for this job as well uh, to get uh, these fittings created or put in place. So yeah, there might be a reason that they don't give you directions on this when you buy the kit, but hopefully this is helpful for you guys. But of course, do anything you see in this video at your own risk. Be careful when you're messing with the oil from your engine. Uh, you know, you can screw things up if you have a major leak or if you add any contaminant to your oil. So we had to do another test. We put the wheel back on after we swapped out that one angle. And as you can see here, successful. This is, this is pretty much the final version of what it looked like. Lots of room now in there, a few inches actually. As you can see, uh, tires, the uh, wheel is fully turned and there's lots of room in there. So that worked out excellent. And then actually a few days later again, uh, because working when I can, I installed the fender liner as well. And everything fit pretty well. I was happy overall with this and how it all fit. And here's just a final walkthrough showing what everything looked like, the way I ran my lines, the way that I mounted this uh, with the brackets, 
uh, I, of course, it, I utilize some zip ties here to try to keep everything, you know, where I thought it should go the best, where it's away from the wheel and also being away, you know, from the engine, um, you know, the pulleys and everything like that. Uh, so as you can see that one line, the longer line does kind of run up and forward. Um, and that's actually, uh, it runs up towards the front of the car and over the lower intercooler pipe kind of on purpose because if the 90 degree elbow coming off of that oil cooler went straight back, it kind of pointed right towards the wheel again. So I didn't see any harm in particularly running the uh, line a little bit longer, running it forward um, like I did there. And what was really nice again I, with the adding this tilt to it basically is that I could get to this top mount uh, or I should say this top line on the oil cooler, I could easily actually uh, get that on and off, which came in very handy since I had to mount this a couple times and, and redo those lines a couple times. But of course, to finish this job, you're going to have to put your bumper back on. So I did that. And after it was on, uh, just showing you that, you know, this is in the stock location, so it should still get some decent airflow. I was a bit surprised when I touched this how warm it got, um, but I haven't really compared it to see how much you know if it felt much warmer than the OEM one like I have on my black car. I'm not really sure if this one performs any better than OEM, but it's definitely good to have this option if you had, you know, an engine that was blown up or something uh, and you didn't, obviously you shouldn't risk reusing your OEM one if, uh, or whatever one you had on when the engine blew up, uh, you should end up swapping it out. So uh, it's good to have this a little bit cheaper option if needed. <laughs> 